I definitely don't keep trying to film a July wrap up when I know, I sort of know that I'm filming an August wrap up. So this is August. I read some stuff and it's definitely not July. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Hi, I'm Pete. This is The Ponderings of Pete. And this is my July, not July, August TBR. <laughs> Welcome to the chaos and poor memory? No, just time. Time is elusive. If you like this video, please go ahead and like it. If you want to see more of whatever you see here, subscribe. Hit that bell notification down below and it'll notify you whenever I release more videos of whatever this is. I also put a fairly but a lot of stuff in the description, so if there are booktubers you want to know about that I mention, go down below. If you want to know about the discords I mentioned, they're down below. If you want to know about the books down books I mentioned, um, I put affiliate links down below. So if you want to go ahead and, and buy one, guess what? I got a little bit of the profit because um, that's how affiliate links work. So. Yay for house fund for me. Without further ado, as everybody else says, we shall get into it. In August, I was AFK for the first six set week of August. Um, I kind of read during that week, but I was busy with stuff at work. Just a lot of stuff going on. I didn't really have that much time to read. But I read a total of seven books. Yeah, seven books in August, which was, you know, an accomplishment for just what I was. I think I had like 20, 10 days left and I had four of those left. So I'm kind of proud of myself that I just read a bunch of books in a row. Actually, it's not seven books, it's eight books. What am I doing? There's a book that's not here that I know I read. I don't know where I put it. Let's start with two. I read, these were my bookends of the month. I read the first one at the beginning, the first one, the second one at the end. The first is Dragons of Winter Night. Boom, boom, by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Um, I was part of a live show for this. Uh, it will be linked up above with a bunch of other booktubers. It was a great conversation. Uh, this is an amazing book. I mean, I say it's an amazing book. This is an older book and its age does show in both of these, um, but it holds up fairly decently well. It's definitely better than the first one, I think. Um, and actually, out of the three, I'll tell you that this is probably my favorite. Um, if we're just comparing the three, because there's a lot better character development. Um, specifically, there's one character that develops a lot, aka Lorana, uh, that I've really enjoyed her character development in this book. Sadly, a lot of that character development was lost in this book. That is Dragons of Spring Dawning. Uh, they made some very distinct character choices in Dragons of Spring Dawning that just felt like they were being forced on the narrative for the sake of the narrative. They weren't didn't feel like choices that the characters would actually make after their... And there's multiple decisions in here, I think, that fall into this category. But they made decisions that their characters wouldn't make. And I know that's kind of like ridiculous, but there's a certain vibe with these books. Um, that is the Dungeons and Dragons vibe, the tabletop RPG vibe. When you look, read these books, you might be able to tell, oh, this is a person playing a game. Because, like, the first book was a transcript of table notes. So you can tell when they kind of break their character. Uh, and you can also tell when it feels like the Dungeon Master is forcing a storyline on the party. In this book specifically. So I think the first half was okay first part of there were three parts to this book so the first part was okay the last part was okay the second part was just there were so many decisions made and just a bunch of stuff introduced that was just like why um and there were two specific lines oh no there was two specific lines one of which i will talk about during the live show because i don't know where the other one is um that were highly problematic to me because the philosophy they preached is kind of toxic in those lines. Yes, th this line in particular was said by a villain, but it was still really toxic, and I want to rant about it. 
But I'm gonna wait until the live show's right to bed. <laughs> because it was just... I'm probably not gonna continue on with this series at all. Like, any other dragon, like, like they're, they're old and I just... I recognize their value. I don't have the nostalgia behind them. But because they're older and because they have frustrating character decision in them, I don't see, like, I'm not convinced to move on, if that makes any sense. So, like, if I'm, I'm, I'm only, I enjoyed Dragons of Winter Night out of all of them. There were still some problematic parts in there, but still, I enjoyed it. Autumn Twilight, I was like, oh, this is cool. This one, I just, like, most of it was just me being annoyed. So I may just not continue with the with any more Dragonlance books because even though they might be better, I want to move on to books that I'm going to definitely enjoy, if that makes any sense. So it was an interesting experiment, and I honestly only intended to read the first three anyways, um, just because I wanted to get a sense of the Dragonlance series, and people said that this was quintessential Dragonlance. So I read it. I may read more Tracy Weiss and Margaret... Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, uh, because I do have the Deathgate cycle um, and obtaining obtaining the rest of them, but I just won't be continuing on with the Dragonlance. Next one, get on, go on a better note, is self-published, which is great. Undeath and Taxes, book two in the Fred the Vampire Accountant series. This was just as good as the, the first one. Very short, episodic type of narrative. Told from the first person memoir format. It's really funny. A lot of accounting jokes, business jokes. And one of my favorite characters, who is not a person, was introduced in this book. She is great and she is amazing. Um, I can't, I, I would love to say why she's amazing and why she's awesome, my favorite character in the series so far. Um, but found family, yeah, um, check this out. Lots of found family. And it's, you know, urban fantasy, just to clarify this. Fred the Vampire Accountant. It's great. Um, very funny. So this is the last book that I read. Um, in order. This is not the last one I'm going to talk about. I still have three more to talk about after this. This is a book that was very, very hyped on YouTube, on BookTube. And I was kind of like, I'm going to read it. But I was very unsure of myself. Or not unsure of myself, but unsure of the book because I wasn't sure if it was going to live up to the hype. Because I hadn't really heard that much criticism about it. Um, but I am pleased to announce that it did live up to the hype. And it was really good. That's Sudden Little Sins by Josiah Bancroft. This was actually originally self-published before the first two books were. And then after the second book is when it was picked up by Orbit. Which they've done with a few different authors. Like this one... Um, the guy who wrote Dr uh, Dragon Venge Fires of Vengeance and Rage of Dragons, um, Evan Winter, he also did the same route where he did was successful as self-publishing, and then I believe it was Orbit was the one that picked him up, which was really cool. It's really cool to see that as a possibility in the self-published industry, though it is very I I do feel like it is few and far between for self-published authors. Anyways, suddenly sense. What did I got this? This was a cynical Alice in Wonderland tale um, that tied together a lot better and more directly than Alice in Wonderland did. Um, you could argue that Alice in Wonderland definitely ties everything together, but because everything's connected, because reasons, but this definitely is more overt about the connections that are in between things. I like this book so much, I'm going to talk about the structure of it eventually. Um, I have a video that I'm going to make that I'm really interested in making about just what this book does and why I think it's so good. I do know that in the second book, the narration and everything changes from the point of view of Senlin, roughly third person Senlin point of view, to, you know, multi POV, which is going to be interesting. Uh, but I think Josiah Bancroft did an excellent, wonderful, beautiful job in this book. So Senlin, our protagonist, is a school teacher that is going on his honeymoon and he loses his wife and they went to the Tower of Babel, um, which is a very, 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 very tall tower with many, many, many levels. 
Um, but if this isn't just like, oh, there's one floor, like one level is probably seven to ten stories high, at the very least, uh, and big enough to contain an entire kingdom in each level. They're called ringdoms, and they're beautiful. They work together to do things, and there's interesting things. There's actually slavery in this book as well, which is interesting. And knowing what I do, I know that that's going to be a topic that is tackled because this Senlin goes into this thing thinking that the tower is the pinnacle of human morality and the center of learning. Um, and he quickly realizes that all is not what he thought it was in the tower. Uh, so it's interesting to start with, the, see the starting naivete that he has progressing to he makes better decisions by the end, um, because he also knows a bit more by the end. He evolves with the tower, but he still is very stubborn about his beliefs, which is very interesting, um, and about his morality compared to the wishy-washiness of the tower. So I definitely think that this um, lived up to all the hype. Uh, I can see some of the flaw after talking with some people, I think there are definitely some flaws in it and the writing style the the specific structure actually i think is what j doesn't jive for a lot of people because a lot of people were like you know i i liked send the sense it wasn't amazing but it wasn't great um but when they get to arm of the sphinx book two they're like oh my gosh this is amazing i think a lot of that has to do with either how the structure or how the narration changes um, that's another video that'd be interesting to do after i finished maybe the entire series i don't know Next one, this is another one I did a live show for, and that is the Communist Manifesto. Um, I did a live show on this with Gregory LaPerch and Chrissy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space. Uh, we talked a long while, and basically my conclusion was there wasn't a lot in here. There's a lot of general things. There's a call to action. There's a, this is why these other socialists are wrong. But a lot of the intrinsic things that I know about communism were actually not in here. And I think they're actually in Das Kapital, which is his other, I believe it was unfinished, his death, um, but his unfinished work, uh, Marx's. Because I didn't really get to talk about those, a reading of Das Kapital is probably in order sometime next year or so. We shall see. But I really enjoyed talking with Christy and Greg about this. Uh, it was great to see other perspectives um, and just talk about some of the weird stuff that's in it uh, and some of the crazy stuff that he also called for. I thought it was very interesting. The next book is another self-published book, The Rave by J.R. Tross. So I did like this book, all in all. What would I say about it? So very, this I would describe this as a urban fantasy, but not your typical urban fantasy, where, whereas we think that urban fantasy usually takes place on Earth, and you have fantastical elements weaved into a cityscape. This definitely takes place on another planet, another world, um, So it's and it's actually closer to sci fantasy, sci urban fantasy, if that makes any sense. I think some people would call it cyberpunk. That makes sense. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of fantasy, specifically like magical and fantasy elements. Uh, our main character is an elf raver, sort of, uh, that is basically a monster hunter. And so she's going to go hunt some monsters for a huge bounty in the capital city, which is right here on the cover. Um, that is not a virus, as you might think. It is actually a city suspended on chains above a planet, which is kind of wild. Uh, and there is a city below it, but we don't really touch on that. We just go into the big ball of the sky. Uh, which is a really interesting concept because think about it, like if you're on the bottom of the ball of the city, you look you look up, up, and you see the that would be you see the ground above you, which would be super disorienting, but super cool. So I thought this was a very interesting concept, and just the magic and the monsters and everything in here, really nice. They're usually they're they're the monsters are based off of um, fairy tales, etc. Um, whether they're Ifrit or demons or some type of greed demon or whatever. Very interesting. And they actually combine the technology with the demon hunting. And I think Tross creates such a wonderful world. And this is going to be a trilogy. 
definitely he went light on some of the monster stuff because one of the concepts introduced is basically in the first chapter is maybe all these elves aka monsters a e l f elves aren't as monstrous as we might think and that concept is revisited once or twice throughout the novel i'm thinking that that means that in the future books we'll see more of the elf which would be great because they seem to have you know their own societies outside of humans that the humans don't know about so yay interesting weird elf um fey culture essentially that's not things so we will see i am excited for the next one to come out i don't know when the next one is coming out when when, when is it coming out huh? Huh, 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 huh um i know he's working on it so check this out so the last one i want to talk about is the empire of black and gold in black and gold in Black and Gold, not of, by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So this one was part of Al Buddy, Reed, Buddy Reed on Alan's channel, which is really cool. This is also on his quest for flintlock fantasy, the best of flintlock fantasy, uh, because this is definitely fantasy and definitely a little bit of flintlock. Um, this is the beginning of a war. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the beginnings of World War II, uh, because... You have this great empire, the Empire of the Wasp, that is invading people, but then they're at war with other people. But you have these other people, the Lowlands, that are like, they're not warring with us. It's fine. We don't need to help all those other people. So it just felt like there's specific um, the, appease the, the appeasement of people in England. It happened in America as well. of Just like, oh, Hitler's not our problem. So that kind of felt like what this was to a certain extent with that fascinating world. I really like Adrian Tchaikovsky's philosophy behind how he builds worlds. So he will take things and he'll be like, okay, let's normalize this aspect of magic. Like in one series, it's like, let's normalize shapeshifting. Or in here, it's ne let's normalize gaining magical powers through med meditation. Um, and so... And these, ma these magical powers are related to certain giant insects. So we have the mantis kindon, the ant kindon, the, be the beetle kindon, etc. They get magic powers. But one, they don't call them magic. And there's another thing out there that is magic. So it's very interesting that, a uh, very interesting thought process that like, okay, then it's not going to be called magic because it's normalized. Which definitely reflects our thought process of magic is simply technology we don't know about. But at the same time, the meditative arts are definitely, like, magic. I mean, the wasps shoot things out of their hands, like shoot bolts of energy out of their hands, which is kind of wild. So this is very start of the war. There's a word, espionage, espionage, espionage missions based. And it really, there, it shows you the vibrant world that is within this book and sets up the rest of the series. Um, I know that books one through four of this 10 book series are a complete arc, uh, but I will be doing the entire series because I think it's really good. And Adrian Tchaikovsky is a writer that I want to read more of. So I'm going to keep going because it's really cool. So I may have said it was the last book, but I actually forgot something. And that is, boom, Autumn War. Uh, I read this in August and guess what? It was amazing. I've been reading the Long Price Quartet for a couple months now. Um, I've actually, at the filming of this video, I'm actually finished with it, finally. But I've loved it so far. And Autumn War, I think so far, is my favorite. I have to do a little bit more processing and sit with the emotional crises that have been caused by these books. Um, they're heavy and beautiful and wow. Um, this is probably the most action-packed of the books. And that's not saying much. There isn't that much. There, there is some action. There's definitely more action than the other books. It's still definitely not ac an action-focused book because of just the nature of how the plots work, how the author, Daniel Abraham, utilizes his characters and for character growth, etc. So, Long Price Quartet, we're going to have a live show. Or, no, no, no. Autumn War, we already had a live show for. It was great. I talked with... Alan from the Library of Alexandria, Klaus from the Contradictorian, and Chase from Chase's Book Thoughts. 
we had a great time. Go check it out. Check out our thoughts on the Autumn War. So yeah, that is everything. Uh, if you have read any of these books, let me know. Talk about them. What'd you think? Uh, did you hate them? Did you love them? Tell me. Uh, and if you again, if you want to buy any of them, and you're convinced that you should buy any of them by my talking for some odd reason, check out the links below, um, and then those are the affiliate links. Thank you so much for sticking around. Get some rest. Bye.